It's big. Woo. Hey guys, stick to Tuning Timu Outdoors. Today I want to talk about lures for rockfish and linka and some tips on fishing for rockfish and linka. Before I get started, I have an announcement. I now have Mumu Outdoors merch available on Teespring, so please check it out. I will leave the link in the description. I have t-shirts, long sleeve t-shirts, sweatshirts in three different designs, and I also got a vinyl sticker and a mug. And more designs are coming in the future. Okay, back to the subject. For the most part, I like to use lures for rockfish and linka. So in this video, I'm going to strictly talk about lures and I'll talk about using live or dead bait in the future. Rockfish and linka, I think, are the easiest game fish you can go after in NorCal. They are most abundant and they are around all year long and they are almost skunk-proof species. However, vessel-based fishing is only allowed typically from April to December and it's subject to change so please check the updated regulations in your area or the area you're going fishing. Also, link cut limit and rockfish limit and sub limit uh, changes almost every year. Sometimes even in mid-season so make sure you keep yourself updated with the current regulation. My favorite place to go fish for rockfish and linka is Sonoma Coast. Because I have more success with linka without traveling too far. Mendocino County is great as well, but it's too far of a drive for me to make it a single day trip. So I usually just go out to Sonoma Coast when I'm targeting linka. So if you've been following my channel for a while, you guys know that I don't necessarily target rockfish that much. Rockfish are generally bycatch species while I'm fishing for linka and uh, sometimes salmon and halibut in the ocean. Rockfish are no doubt good eating fish, but personally, I think linka tastes better and I love the fight with linka. I still end up catching a couple or few rockfish, so there's plenty for me. So let's go over my gear for rockfish and linka. So you guys have seen this so many times. Uh, Shimano Traveller 7 foot medium light and Daiwa Lexa 300. I have a review video on the rod and the reel, so please check it out. I'll leave it in the description. I like using this combo because it's light. When you are jigging all day, every ounce helps. I typically use 40 to 50 pound braid for my main and I top shot 25 to 30 pound mono. You want to use either floral or mono top shot or leader to get that abrasion resistance. I don't like using heavier than 30 pound mono or floral leader or top shot because when you get really snagged, it's almost impossible to break it off from a kayak. So you want something you can break it off with some effort. I used so many different models of metal jig and swim bed in the past. And for now, let me show you some metal jigs. You got a 4 ounce floater jig right here and a 4 ounce diamond jig. And we got a 6 ounce diamond jig, another 6 ounce jig, another 6 ounce jig, and a squid jig right here. I used to have so many different metal jigs but I don't anymore because I don't use them too much because I like the bigger profile of a swing bait. Okay, let's talk about rockfish a little. For my experience, I had more success with a smaller lure. From a shrimp fly like this to a smaller 3 inch, 4 inch bass lure with a piece of squid added to it for the scent. Yes, they do buy bigger lures than this how I catch them but if you want quantity, small lure, you get more fish. Okay, let's get into the good stuff. Linka. As my buddy the Lost Anchovy calls it, the filthies. Like I said before, I like using a bigger profile lure for Linka without getting it too big. Linkas are very aggressive fish with a huge mouth, so they don't easily get intimidated by bigger lures. I think that having the bigger lure near them will get you more bites because you want enough calories to motivate them to swim out of their hole and chase the bait. I've caught plenty of linka with the metal jig, but if you compare the size difference, this is a 6 ounce jig and this is a 7 and 3 quarter swim bait. I typically fish from 15 feet of water to 150 feet of water and I never really needed a jig heavier than 8 ounce. I typically use 4 ounce jig in, 
with the swim bait which is a two ounce so added together they're about six ounce i occasionally use the six ounce jig head when the drift is faster than usual another reason i don't like using smaller lures especially when i'm fishing deeper water is because i don't want to catch smaller rockfish in the deep water rockfish will suffer from bear trauma and i have to use the descender to safely release the fish otherwise rockfish cannot swim down and simply just suffer on top of the water and eventually die i just don't like killing unnecessary fish using a descender is extra work that i like to avoid because most of the time i only have one run you will catch less number of rockfish but you will only catch a good sized rockfish with the bigger bait. I have used so many different brands and models of swim bait and there are many good swim baits out there. And let me show you some of them. Let me start from the smallest and we'll go to the biggest. This is a twin tail scampi, as known as a cabazon killer. We got five inch paddle tail by Pitbull. We got 6.5 inch paddle tail by Big Hammer. We got seven inch paddle tail by Custom Craft. We got 7.5 inch sleel from Branson Bait. And we got 7.75 inch sea slug from Branson Bait. And we got 8 inch paddle tail by People. And we got 8 inch paddle tail by Branson Bait. After using a lot of different brands and models, I'm gonna have to say Branson Bait is my favorite. For full disclosure, I am a pro staff with Branson Bait. And I am not trying to promote Branson Bait because I'm their pro staff. I actually joined the team last year after using their product for two years and I absolutely love them and I really believe in their product. Okay, with that said, Sea Slug has been my favorite for last three years. This is a 7.75 inches long, which is pretty big, but it's not overwhelmingly too big. And it's got really nice thick body. This has just the right softness to it. Some are a little bit too soft, so they easily get shredded. And some are a little bit too hard, they easily get broken off. But these are very durable. I've caught more than 10 link cut with the same lure before. I never had to replace them before because I usually lose them by getting snagged on the bottom. All Branson baits are made with the same excellent quality plastic and I really think that you get the best value for your buck. The price is very good too. These are around three and a quarter when you buy four pack and uh, for the lure this size, it's really good price. They are located in the Sacramento area. So if you are in NorCal, you are supporting a local business. They also have this paddle tail which is about eight inches long and they are the same price as the uh, sea slugs and this is a new product they came out with last year which is called sleel fish up got a brownie brownie there you go fish up there you go there you go oh yeah Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, nice brown. That's a nice brown here. It's kind of halfway between the sea slug and the eel lure. It's about a quarter inch shorter and it has slimmer profile, yet wide enough for your jig head. This is much less intimidating for the rockfish, yet big enough so that smaller rockfish won't bother to mess with it. If you are targeting link cut, but want a little more action of rockfish, this is a good option. This is very affordable at around $250 a piece. So if you guys want to check out Branson Baits, I'll leave the link in the description. 
Sometimes I put a smaller lure on top of my swim bait to get more rockfish action but every time I do that I regret it because I get attacked by a smaller rockfish. Okay, enough talking about the lures, let's get into some tips of catching rockfish and linka. So how do you find rockfish or linka? Just like most fish, the key is to find structure. Looking at the Google Earth before you head out is a good way to find the structure. And locating bait fish or pinnacles on your fish finder is another good way as well. And sometimes rocky or reef bottom can show flat on the fish finder, so it's a little bit hard to tell. So just like anything, the more time you put into it, you have more success finding structure or finding fish. So there are two major ways to use your lure. You can either cast it out and hop it on the bottom, or drop your weight straight down for a vertical jigging. I like the vertical jigging because the more line angle you have, the more likely to get snagged. And when you are vertical jigging, you can either bounce the lure off the bottom or crank your wheel a couple times and keep your lure off the bottom. You will get more snagged if you bounce it off the bottom. However, you will get more hits. Believe me, I have my fair share of lure offerings to the ocean bottom. So the trick to bounce off the bottom is to minimize the time you come in contact with the bottom. Longer you contact the bottom, more likely to get snagged. As soon as you feel the bottom, you want to lift your rod up and repeat. Like, and like I said, keeping the line straight down means less snag. If you are drifting faster than normal because of the current or the wind, your line will go at an angle. You can counter this by using a heavier jigger or pedal against the current or the wind. And this is another time pedal kayaks becomes very convenient. So if you want to lose less lure, crank your reel a couple of times so your lure does not touch the bottom. One last tip is linka will more likely to hit on the fall than the when the lure goes up. So when you are jigging on the bottom, you're feeling the bottom and all of a sudden you don't feel the bottom. Many times that means linka took your lure. So it's a good idea to set the hook when you don't feel the bottom. It also could be the depth change, but it's still a good idea to set the hook because you never know. So I'm going to end this here because I don't want this video to get too long. If you have any questions, please comment down below. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Stay tuned for more and stay safe and stay healthy.